Hello, this is Jared, and in this video we're going to be continuing our exploration of responsive web design. So we've already looked at some of the techniques that we, that we can use, uh, but in this video we're going to start getting our hands dirty a bit with some of the design patterns. So obviously the design of your website is completely up to you, but there are certain patterns, certain trends that may be worth considering for implementation into your website. In this video we're going to be looking at a very popular navigation pattern. And let's have a look at this demo of it. So you can see that out here in the wide viewport we have a horizontal navigation and then when we go to the more narrow viewport we have a vertically stacked navigation that's hidden in this drawer here and we can toggle that with this handle. This is very sim simple to implement and we're going to have a look at how to do that today. So I have a folder here called nav, call it whatever you like. I'm going to create a new file called index.html and in here is just going to be basically what you'd expect. It's basically just your normal website. I'm going to call this navigation demo. Uh, I'm going to create a header. In the header, I'm going to call it um, best website since Google. Um, under this, we're going to have our nav element. In there, we have an unordered list and some list items in there. Let's go for some page names. Um, oh no! Okay, gallery contact. All fairly reasonable page names I would say. And now I'm going to wrap these in anchor tags using a bit of sublime text voodoo. And I'm just going to add sort of a, a hash link there. So now we have this navigation, which is basically the markup that you'd have on any other sort of site. So there's nothing new here. And I'm going to create a simple section, just stick some basic text in there. And let's link in a style sheet. So I'm going to call this style.css, create it. And let's see, so I'm just going to start styling the website for the desktop. So I'm going to have my body with a margin of zero and a padding, well, padding of zero. And I'm going to put a font family of there on there of sans serif because we're all modern people. Um, for our header, I'm going to put a background on it of zero, zero. 795F. I have some colours picked out written down here, but you can use basically whatever you want. Um, give it a width, a pad, some padding. Using the shorthand here for padding, so if you want to have uh, this is giving it 40 pixels top and bottom and then zero padding left and right. What else should we have? Let's have a white colour on there and align the text. Center. And I'm also just going to stick that in H1s. For my navigation, I'm going to have uh, a background color again. I'm going to stick again, I have written down some colors 286. Use whatever you like. You want to put on here overflow hidden. Now this is going to be important later on because we're going to be uh, fiddling with the height and if we have a height smaller than the content within that element and an overflow of auto then we're going to get um, the content sort of spilling out of the unordered list and that's not what we want. So I'm going to put a colour of white on here as well. And a margin, no I don't need, don't need the centering. Um, also going to put some padding on there. And because I'm going to have uh, inline block list items, I can use text align center to center my list items. Speaking of, let's create them. So as I said, display of inline block. Going to give them some padding. 
Um, and yeah, I think that's all we need. Let's have a look quickly. Yeah, looking all right, kind of. <laughs> you take the margin off the navigation. You notice um, that we have ugly anchor tags. A good way to normalize your anchor tags, if you want to get rid of the underline and the color on them, is to say text decoration none, that gets rid of the underline, and then I found color inherit works very well. So instead of trying to manually fix the color back to what it should be, it, it will just um, it will just take the color from whatever's around it, which is really handy. And then for my section, I'm going to again something I've been finding recently is that line height putting a line height of 1.5 m's is really nice actually. It's, it spaces out the text a lot nicer, and I think it's just a bit easier on the eye for the user because you know if you have a big dense block of text, it's not always the best thing to be reading. Padoing. <laughs> um, what else? A width of 75%. <laughs> and center that. Okay, so that's nice, just a, a normal sort of style for the desktop. I'll add also some hover states for this, just change the background color. I'm going to change that to 399077. Semicolon. So now we have a nice hover state on there. So now that's all fine and good, but we've all seen that before. We all know how to do that sort of stuff. Let's jump into the mobile side of things. So if you haven't already watched my video about media queries, it might be worth doing that now because we're going to be creating a media query and we want to be targeting a max width. And let's see what we're going to set this to. So uh, if you watch the media query video, you'll know that if you background the dev tools and then resize the window, you can see the size of the window in the top right, which is really handy. So it looks like somewhere around 580 to 600 is going to be a good break point for this. So I'm going to go 580, open this up. And in here, we're going to style our list items how we want them to be. I'm going to just do that. Don't need to, but adds a little bit more specificity. Um, so our list items, I want them to be width 100%. And because their width is 100% and we have padding on them, we're going to need to put a border box, uh, sorry, box sizing of border box on there. Now this is because if you had the normal box sizing, it would be adding the padding on the outside. So obviously width of 100% plus extra padding would overflow. But I won't go too, into too much detail about that right now. Also going to take a bit less, a bit, sorry, a bit of padding off. So padding 15 pixels rather than 20. So now if we go down to, yeah, that's looking nice. Let's add I think I'm going to put them on the left, so text align them left. Again, it's all just little details, you can do this however you like. So there, our list items are done how we like. Now we need to add this handle that we had. Um, okay, so this is just going to be a div. We want this to be inside our navigation element, but outside of the UL element. So I'm just going to call this uh, handle, give it a class of handle. And inside here, just have the word menu. Another thing we had inside here in the demo was the sort of shutter icon. I'm not going to go over how to create that in this video, but this is created in this demo with just using HTML and CSS. This is really quite easy to do if you look around on how to do it. But again, I'm not going to cover this in this video, but make sure that if you are using this technique, you do use some sort of icon because it's just going to make it so much more obvious for the user. Whenever you're using some sort of clever navigation design, it's important to make sure that the user knows what they're doing with it. So make sure that if you are using this, you have a little icon in there. Okay, so our handle we want to style. This is outside of the media query, first of all. So, well, let's give it a width first of 100% background of that 
remember my hash. Let's text align it left. Um, give this a box sizing of border box as well because we're also doing the width 100 and that, and we're going to be adding uh, padding on this. So put border box on that as well. Maybe 10 pixels padding or 15 pixels top and bottom, 10 pixels left and right. That would be nice. Um, I'm also going to put a cursor, cursor, yeah, cursor pr of pointer on here. So if you're not aware what that does, it makes sure that we have this little hand, um, which we'd usually see on an anchor tag, um, but it allows us to put it on things that aren't an anchor tag. So that's really handy when you want uh, to make it obvious to users that an element is clickable. Also, just going to put color white on there, and that'll do it for that. Okay, so now we have our elements styled, but we need to think about hiding certain things. So we want to hide this handle for when we're in the wider viewports, and we want to hide the list uh, items, initially anyway, for the mobile viewports, the, the narrower viewports. So hiding the handle is really simple. Um, because we don't want to animate it at all, we can just say display none, and it won't show up on the wider viewports and then inside this media query we can say handle display block and that will work perfectly for what we need it to do and it will show up in the smaller viewports. The actual unordered list hiding that is going to be a little bit more difficult because we want to animate it. Unfortunately we can't animate between display none and display block because there is no in between there. The browser can't uh, interpolate values between those two things. So we need to use something that will be able to be animated. We could use height, but then we'd be setting an explicit height and that we might end up sort of setting it bigger than it needs to be. So what we're going to do instead is to set a max height on our UL. So we're going to do that inside the media query. Oh, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to put it above this just because I feel like that's a bit neater. And okay, so as I said, we're putting a max height on this of zero pixels. So that's going to hide it for the mobile viewports. I keep saying mobile, I should really just be saying narrow viewports because uh, it's any viewport that's less than 180 pixels. So that's hidden it nicely for those viewports and still showing for the wider ones. So the way we're going to show this now is to add a class of showing, well I'm just going to call this showing, to the UL element whenever we want it to be shown. And then we're going to affect the max height property again, and I'm going to set this to 20 EM. This is where this technique has a bit of guesswork involved, because this needs to be something that's definitely going to be big enough to hold the, the navigation list, but not too big so that it messes with the animation. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So now, because we have two numerical values here, two things that can be uh, interpolated, we have 0 to 20, so the browser can go from 0 to 20, and it can animate it. What we're going to do is add the transition. So in our UL, we say transition, and we want to, that to affect the max height property. And I'm going to set this to 0 0.4 seconds, just because it's not too fast and it's not too slow. And now we need to, oh Christ, we need to prefix this a few times. So I'm going to say WebKit MS Mozilla and O for Oprah. So now if we look at this and we go into our inspector here, if we open up the nav element and start affecting the class here, if we set it to showing, you can see that it animates open. So that's exactly what we want to do. Now all we need to do is to toggle that class, because as you can see if I take that away it closes again, animates to closed. We just need to toggle that class by clicking on this handle. 
And I'm going to do that with jQuery, but you don't have to if you want to just use pure JavaScript. Uh, just look up how you can toggle a class with pure JavaScript. It's not too difficult, it's just a few more lines of code. I'm just using jQuery here to save time. So I'm using the Google hosted libraries, and I recommend you do as well. So you just click on jQuery here, copy the link. I'm going to stick that in the head of our document. And then at the bottom here, I'm going to create the script to toggle the class. So the way we do this is really simple. So we go target the class of handle. So we have our handle here targeting that and it's going to be on the click event comma going to execute a function and that function is going to be our nav ul we want to toggle the class of showing and that's really all there is to it so if we look at this now now we're down, we can see if we click on this, it toggles the class of showing and so our CSS kicks in and we get this tr nice transition to open up the drawer of our navigation. So that's all there is to this really popular navigation design pattern. And I would really recommend trying to implement it into your site and seeing how it goes.